What's up, YouTube, and welcome back to the second episode of the Free Play Podcast featuring Tenacity. I got to talk about a ton of topics with Tenacity, including social media growth, competitive play, how to rank up, as well as how he got signed to Ghost at the end. So there's a ton of stuff to cover, boot up Free Play, and without any further ado, hope you enjoy the video. Oh, and quickly, if you're new here, what's up? My name's Luke, and I run Rocket League's number one live coaching program, where we specialize in taking plat through champ ranked players up to GC and even SSL in just six weeks or less. At the time I'm dropping this, we are relaunching for the 11th time. This is going to be our season 11 launch. I'm super excited. It's going to be the biggest one yet. And by the end of the week, I'm hoping to get 10 more plat through champ ranked players who want to grab that GC or SSL title in the next six weeks. So if you're chasing one of those titles, DM me on Discord with the keyword 11, and we can talk more details about coaching and our season 11 launch. Links down below. Other Otherwise, enjoy the video. Yo, what's up, guys, and welcome back to the Free Play Podcast, the number one Rocket League podcast that's also only available on YouTube currently. But we're working <laughs> on that. <laughs> Tenacity, welcome to welcome to the podcast, man. Welcome, welcome. It's good to be here, bro. It's good to be here. Yeah, it's been it's been a minute. We we caught up in I, I hope we have some footage that when we were in the casino that one night at uh at the London uh land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the the guy um <laughs> the the one of the guys at the table made me turn off my phone. I was trying to record one of the hands you were playing and I couldn't get it. <laughs> well, thank God you didn't. I did not have good nights. I dude, <laughs> I definitely lost like 150 pounds in total at that dang casino. And it, it just, it still hurts me. Because I was up the first night, and then we kept going back. All all the Rock League creators kept going back there. And every time, like, I, I was sitting there betting Riz with Rizzo and Athena. And I was like, ah, I don't want to bet. But I got to bet it's Rizzo <laughs> and Athena. And then we all ended up losing money. And I'm like, God dang it. Terrible. It's probably a good thing you, it's probably a good thing you couldn't record anything. <laughs> it wouldn't have been good. It yeah. would have been bad. <laughs> well, write it off on the uh, on the company card. It was part of the part yeah. of the content. Part of the content. That's a, yeah, it's a tax write off right there. That was a business meeting. <laughs> <laughs> business meeting at the Blackjack. Too. I love it. I love it. Well, dude. First off, I mean, I, I told I told you when we met up, but congratulations on all the recent success, dude. That getting signed with Ghost. Getting, Thank you. reaching, you're all almost a mil on on, there. on TikTok, close. and you've exploded on like every social platform in a way that like, man, like no Rocket League creator has in the past. I don't, I don't since 2016, 2017, since free to play. I, I don't know, man. It's been incredible. It's been incredible. It, it has been, it has been a journey. I'll tell you that much. It has been exceptional it has been so much fun it's been a blessing for sure and, but it's not without like a ton of hard work but um yeah. it's definitely it's, it's kind of a dream come true in a way i mean i still don't see myself as like where i want to be but right i'm very proud of what i've been able to do um mainly just because of all the hard work i put yeah. into it, it well it, it's crazy because i know there's so many people out there and like who, who want to get into content and who want to get into like this sort of thing and there, I always hear like Rocket League's too saturated, you, YouTube saturated, Rocket League saturated, gaming saturated. And then here you come like seemingly out of, I think you might have even started getting into the YouTube game later than I have. And you're passing me up on all socials and it's, it's, <laughs> it's insane. What, what made you, what made you get into making Rocket League content? What was that like? Where, where? It was, so, I mean, it was just the only game that I genuinely loved, like, I mean, I, I've been into gaming um, on and off, like, throughout my childhood and stuff. Uh, I started out with, like, Call of Duty, and I used to yeah. love Call of Duty. Like, I grinded it. Um, that was one of my major hobbies, apart from, like, sports and stuff. Um, but it wasn't until Rocket League that I actually, like, genuinely loved it. I mean, I first got introduced to it when a buddy of mine brought his PlayStation 4 over to my house, and... Um, he would stay the night pretty often and we would play it and yeah. I would wait till they go to sleep just so I could play full screen <laughs> and I would stay up until like five in the morning just playing Rocky League because I don't know what it was about that game but I just loved yeah. it so much and so I just kept playing it and playing it and playing it and then I went off to college I didn't play it for a year or two I ended up uh, moving to Florida just for you know different life opportunities and then when I got a job as a waiter I downloaded Rocket League again and immediately like fell in love with it and started grinding it and then 
The only reason I started doing content is because a buddy of mine started streaming, and I was like, well, I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm serving tables and bartending. I don't really yeah. do anything at home apart from, like, go to the gym, so why not? Let's just give it a shot. Yeah. And um, from there, at first, it was just a hobby, just something else to do, and it, it started to grow a little bit at a time. And then, of course, TikTok is when it really started to blow up. But um, Wow. I would say the only reason I started making content and, like, streaming, because it all started with streaming, is just... Mm -hmm. Because I loved the game, and I, I've always wanted to be an entertainer. Like, you know, back when I was a kid, of course, you want to be an actor and whatnot. You, you just want to entertain. If, back then, it was acting, but in reality, you just want to entertain and, and be that type of person who can um, provide joy and entertainment to people and maybe even be an inspiration. And so that's kind of the main reason. But I think with Rocket League, like, that was just one of my only passions. Like, I, I never wanted to be the type yeah. of content creator that, like, is is the stereotypical, you know, like doing little quirky sh dances or like, <laughs> you know, going out to public places and interviewing people and being weird. I, that just yeah. wasn't my type of thing. I, that did not interest me at all. And uh, it just so happened that I love Rocket League. And when I started streaming, I was just starting to get to GC. Like I was champion three GC and this is back before SSL. So that was the top rank. And I was like, well, I mean, at the very least, if people don't like me for me, they can maybe enjoy some of the gameplay because I'm, I'm decent, right. you know, like I'm not amazing, but I'm decent. That's so And funny. uh, yeah, that, that that's similar to me because when I started making videos, I was like, <laughs> I was, I think I was maybe C3, but it was when GC <laughs> yeah. was the highest rank and I was maybe C3 and it's, uh, it, it was hard to get started because I was like, yeah, am I, am I good enough? Am I good enough to make videos? But Dude, you, you, it's funny because when I started, I just wanted to help people get into tutorials. And it sounds like, I mean, you just you just uploaded videos because it was a game you liked. Did you ever think like when you were starting out, like I'm going to have 900K on TikTok in 18 months or <laughs> 12, 12 Dude, months? Um, no. Oh, well, so it's been, it's I think since I actually started, it's been about almost two years. But no, oh, wow. e either way, I... I did not. I mean, that's always the hope. Like when you, whenever you post on any social media platform, like the hope is always that you'll get decent popular, you get a following and, and you'll grow. But when I started, it was just for fun. Like um, the reason I started on TikTok is because my girlfriend, you know, this is when I was streaming. So my girlfriend was always on her phone on TikTok and this is during the lockdown. So we didn't have anything else to do, but I would make mm. fun of her. I'd be like, what are you doing on that stupid app, that dancing app? Like, <laughs> what's on that thing that's like actually fun to watch? This is, I, I don't understand it. Yeah. And then it, it would just so happen that like after my stream or whatever, when we were, me and her are just hanging out because we live together, mm -hmm. uh, she would show me these videos and I'd laugh at them because they'd be entertaining and funny. And I'm like, oh, well, well, dang. And so then I downloaded TikTok and then I started being on it all the time. And I was like, well, you know what? I mean, if I'm on it, um, I saw a few Rocket League videos, but not a lot like back in mm -hmm. the day. Rocket League just did not have like a following on TikTok. There weren't a lot of Rocket League videos on there. Right. But I saw a few and I was like, ah, you know what? Why not? Like, let me just see. And so I took a few of my stream clips and I posted them. Of course, they didn't really do anything. But I remember I posted one video and surprisingly enough, it did pretty good. Like it got like five or 10,000 views. And I was like, oh, crap. Like there's potential here. Right. And um, so then I just posted normally for a while. And then I posted the tutorial video that I posted. Right. And I went from 500 followers to 10,000 overnight. And then after that, I just like, it's like a fire just erupted from yeah. in me. I'm like, holy, I, I cannot like let this moment pass. I got to keep, I got to keep the momentum. I got to keep it going. And pretty much ever since that day, it has just been nonstop for me. I mean, really? I just, I have rarely taken a day off um and um usually at any point like even on the weekend i always take weekends off because there is absolutely burnout um yeah. but even then i'll still try and post a youtube video a tiktok or something and i've just been able to keep the momentum going that entire right. time lots of hard work it's always adapting and um and yeah. it's just it's, it's just gone very very well <laughs> well, surprisingly enough. well yeah i mean i think it's i mean it definitely takes a certain type of person to be able to go go at it that long and i think like when i when i talk to a lot of people about you know social like seeing people on socials a lot of people see you and they're like wow he's just he, he's he's creating content daily he's streaming almost every day he's on almost every platform and all the content's popping off, and a lot of people just think, "Wow, he must he must have something that I don't, or he must have always ha have had it figured out." What mm -hmm. was it like, like 
I, it, it's funny because when I when I talk to you, when I talk to other YouTubers, it's it's incredible how most of the people who succeed in kind of like kind of this space are the people who just start out creating content because they like creating content. They don't know everything. They don't know exactly what it's going to lead into, but they're like, this is fun. I see TikTok doing well. For example, I see my girlfriend on it every day. What if, yeah. <laughs> what if, what if I use this on for, for, you know, what if, what if I took advantage of this? Was that, was it like, what was your mentality getting started? Did you have it all figured out? Were you like, I'm going to have Twitch, TikTok, Insta going one day and not even close, man. Um, when I first started out, like, all right. So when I first started streaming, I was streaming off of a PS4 and the quality was terrible. Like I bought a PS4 camera that you can only, it's the only camera that you can use with PS4. Yeah. And pretty much nothing came out of it like uh, i mean i may i might have gotten a few hundred followers maybe but i also wasn't posting any other content and it's very 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 difficult to grow as a streamer if you don't post content elsewhere because you know you got to keep in mind even mm -hmm. with rocket league which is a pretty niche category um if you only have like up let's say five viewers there's still probably a hundred streamers above you so if you if someone goes to the browse page on twitch you're you're at the bottom more or less and um, that makes it extremely difficult to grow. But that's not where my mind was at the time. Like I said, I was doing this as a hobby. I, my mentality was, is I'm getting off of work, I'm going to the gym, and I'm getting home, and I'm playing Rocket League for a few hours a night anyways. Like, there's a potential there. So why not right. just, you know, I'm already on my PS4. Why not just press the go live button through there? And let's see if, at the very least, I enjoy it, regardless of the success that I have. And yeah. then I enjoyed it and, you know, I, I wasn't growing huge at all, but I think I had like five, maybe 10 viewers, maybe, maybe probably five. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, <laughs> let's see if I can increase the quality. So then I bought a laptop that I could like stream uh, through OBS, still playing on my PS4, but stream to OBS. That way I could have alerts and like, you know, I could change the format of how things looked. And when I started doing that, that's when I started actually, because the stream quality looked a lot better. And so that's when I started growing a little bit more. And um, that's also about the time when I started posting onto TikTok. And again, it was just for fun. That's all it yeah. was. Like, it was just because, like, let's see what happens. I don't expect any of these things to do well. But at the very least, I'm learning something. And that's another thing that I was pretty hard set on is, like, I'm learning all these different things. I'm learning how to edit on my phone. I'm learning how to, like, take clips from stream and do all these different things. So... All, all in all, regardless of what happened, I thought it was beneficial to me because I'm like learning a craft. It's better than yeah. me just getting off work and just getting right. on Rock League and not really doing anything. At the very least, I'm kind of learning something. And um, the, I think it's all about the mentality of when you start. It, it shouldn't be, I'm doing this because I, I want to freaking grow. I, wanna, I want this to be a full-time job and I want to be popular. I want to be one of the big guys. It, it needs to be a, I'm doing this because I just want to, like do something extra i want to learn something new and i'm just doing this for fun you know i yeah. think it's all about the mentality that you have yeah especially getting started out because i see so many people and i think they have this expectation of like pe people underestimate the amount of energy it will take and they overestimate the speed that they'll get their results at and yeah. when you do those things it sets it sets a lot of people up even who are doing like gr making great content at the start to be mm -hmm. discouraged if they're not seeing the same results as other people and when i talk to guys like you and when i talk to Wayton and thanovic it's like everybody who just starts out and who does it because they love it and who's just trying to get better and learn along the way it's funny how those are the people that stay in it the longest that end yeah. up end up having the most success in the long run and so you never set like those those like deadlines for yourself you're never like i have to be at a certain amount of subscribers by a certain amount of time you're just like i'm going to show up every day and that was like your mentality so i think it i think it's a word choice there so there's goals and deadlines deadlines are different than goals because if you th if you think in your head like all right I need to have a certain amount of growth and subscribers or you know followers by this by this time um it's just it's more of a negative thought process but yeah. if you set goals and you're like all right I'm going to work my butt off to try and achieve this amount of growth by this time I think all in all it's a little bit more of a positive outlook on on you and like the content that you're posting but I have in my own head kind of created a little formula of how creating content at least this day and age um should go and and is the best for growth and also your mentality because burnout's real you don't want to overdo it you don't want to because if you are overdoing it and you're burning yourself out you're posting like twice a day on tiktok and you're, you're spending all this time 
you're going to end up hating it. And that's the opposite of what you want because you want to enjoy this job if, if it becomes a job. Um, but the first thing is knowing that your content needs to be different than other people's. I see lots and lots of really good content on like TikTok of Rocket League content on TikTok or on YouTube content that if they had more subscribers or followers might end up doing a lot better. But it's very similar to other people's content. Like rarely do I see a very high quality video that's well thought out and follows a certain set of like guidelines for videos to do well. But yeah. there are small things like if it's a short video, it needs to be funny. It needs to it needs to kind of surprise you. It needs, something needs to happen that you don't expect because that's going to get people to interact with that content. If it's a longer video, it needs to follow some... There has to be similar to any type of story. There needs to be like a climax. There needs to be something that happens or it needs to be telling the viewer something or showing them something mm. in, in, a set, in a set way. Even if it's a minute long, you'd be surprised at how much you can fit into a minute long video. Yeah. Um, and then it also needs to have like trending sounds. So you need to put a trending either build up music or just uh, a, a song that's very popular at that time. Um, and there has to be some type of shock value for the most part. There's just so many things that go into whether or not a video will do well. But some people think that they can just be really good at the game, hit a double flip reset in a competitive game and just throw that on TikTok and it's going to do insanely well. But that's just not the case most of the time unless you're already a well-known person. Right. Um, and then kind of a similar thing for YouTube. You know, there's hundreds of people right now that are putting out really, really good, high-quality, well-edited um, videos on YouTube of Rock League. I mean, you look at Sunless, Wait, Musty, the so freaking many people who are just putting out such good content. Um, what's going to make your videos stand out? Like, are you doing the, are you doing a similar thing to them? Are you doing... A structured video like oh i you know one ssl versus five gold players or one ssl until or one <laughs> one ssl until or uh, versus gold players until he, he loses like you're just gonna keep on adding are yeah. you doing that video or are you doing something specific to you or you, like what's your game plan here i think it's very important to go into content creation understanding like what your type of content is going to be because people are going to associate your content with you. And mm -hmm. I think it needs to be consistent in that way. Like for me, I try to focus my content around my stream. So all the videos that I post, almost all of them, not all of them, but almost all my videos come from clips from my stream that I turn into some type of video. Same thing for my YouTube. Uh, what I've been doing on my YouTube is I'll take clips that I have and I'll sort them into like little mini montages, minute, two minute longs. Uh, with very relaxing music behind them, or I'll take a 30-second clip of something funny that happened during stream, I'll upload that. And then occasionally I'll, up uh, I'll upload a little bit longer of a video, maybe 10 or 20 minutes of something that happened during stream. Like maybe I'm playing 2v2 with a, another uh, pro player or something like that. But I try to make sure I don't put too much effort into being like other creators. I, I want my mm -hmm. content to be different i want it to stand out and that's another thing that you need to keep in mind if you're ever trying to become a content creator in rock league is what are you doing that's going to stand out right and i think there's something underlying there it's like the this whole idea i totally agree with what you're saying i i personally have more experience with the youtube so it's super cool for me to hear like how you map out like a minute long tiktok short yeah. or youtube short but i think it's like the, the the idea of the content that you make at least at the start Mm -hmm. has to and this is kind of how i've always thought about it it has to very much be about the viewer and serving the viewer rather yeah. than serving you like the, you know these mass you got these massive channels like like musty for example where people mm -hmm. are just gonna watch musty for musty they're gonna watch squishy oh, for squishy they're gonna watch garrett mm -hmm. for garrett G. and it's like if if people don't know your name they're not watching you for you so what can no. you give them that is going to entertain them educate them there has to be some sort of value add there yeah because you can't you can't just do what the big dogs are doing like it's not well, i mean dude with yeah. musty it's like he's gonna he uploads anything it's gonna get a hundred thousand views just because yeah. it's musty it doesn't matter how high quality the video is a hundred thousand people are going to click on that video because it's musty or squishy or or sunless it just doesn't matter but like if you're a new content creator no one is going to care who you are so you are going to have to make the viewer want to click that video or you know watch right. that watch the entirety of that TikTok, whatever it may be and the bigger creators have it easy like that but they've done like they've already been through the ringer like they've already put their work mm -hmm. in they've made it to that spot 
where they're able to upload anything and odds are it's going to get a decent bit of views just because it's them so right. you know for all the creator all the uh people who want to be creators like that and, and then grow and be successful unfortunately we like none of us have that luxury but you got to get to that point and to get to that point you got to really work hard and you've got to make uh videos and thumbnails that stand out and you know give that viewer a reason to right. click on that video right it's funny because you myself like i didn't even realize now that i'm thinking back i remember i used to when i was when I was in my dorm room freshman year at school, I used to, I, I, now, now I'm getting flashbacks. I remember seeing shorts that you would mm -hmm. post and it was like, why you suck it or how to not suck at Rocket League, why, why you suck at Rocket League, something that's like blood. that. <laughs> and yeah, but uh, no, I'm butchering it now that I'm talking to you. And, but, um, no, no, that's it. That's it. It's funny because the more I think about it, like all these big creators, Sunless, he used to have a why you, why, why, W Y S A R L, why you suck at something like, why you suck yeah, at Rocket well, League. It, so, Everybody started uh, actually, with the tutorial. What are your thoughts on that? Is there a, like everyone starting with tutorials? I, I noticed like Waiten, Thanovic, you, me. Well, I kind of still do tutorials, but um, yeah, yeah. Well, it's I think the tutorial, the tutorial scene is, and the reason why people do them so much at starting out with content is because it works, and it's because that's one of the easiest way for people to want to click on your video is your your. When it comes to videos and content, you have to give the viewer something. What are you giving them? Are you giving them information? Are you giving them entertainment? Um, what are you providing for that viewer that they would not be getting if they didn't click the video? Well, one of the best possible forms of content is informational content because you're teaching somebody something. That's, that's very easy value that they're receiving by watching and clicking on your video. And to, to, when it comes to video games, I mean, there's really only two directions you can go. Entertainment or tutorials. And when it comes to getting people to watch your video or finding your content, tutorials is by far the best format that you can go with because you're providing them value. A lot of times people go onto YouTube and what are they looking up? How to flip reset. Yeah. Uh, best way to rotate in Rocket League. Like there's so many people that are trying to improve because, you know, when it comes to a very mechanical game like Rocket League, it's very hard to learn new things without the help of others who have already learned those things. Yeah. And... I call it just being opportunistic. And that's one of the only reasons why I was able to grow the way that I did is because I, I saw an absence of content on Rocket League TikTok, on TikTok for Rocket League. And it was tutorials. Like when I was starting out at this point, I had probably posted maybe like 15, 20 videos of just random clips for my stream that I may have like done a little editing to, but they didn't, you know, they, they, they didn't stand out. There was no reason people would have wanted to watch the videos unless they just really liked Rocket League. Right. Um, and I, I noticed that there were a few creators on Rocket League TikTok that had get a get, they've gotten a pretty good following, but none of them have really posted any any tutorials at all. Mm. Um, and I noticed that because of that, um, at, like lack of informational content on TikTok, I was like, I need to jump on this. I I can sit down one day. I had never edited a video on my PC. I had never taken footage, cut it up, and done things with it. But I thought, let me give it a shot. Let me see what I can do. And I, it was my, the first video was just a camera settings. I think is all it was it's like, hi, yeah. my name's nasty. And this is how not to suck at Rocky league. And you know, first things first camera settings. And then I just yeah. listed some decent camera settings. Boom. I mean, in, in like two days, the video had half a million views, a hundred thousand likes. And then in a week later, it had two million or a million views. And I went from 500 to 10,000 followers, and then I was just like, holy crap, this went insanely well. Let yeah. me keep doing that. And then um, for the next basically two weeks, every single day, I would just sit down. I didn't even stream at this time. I would just sit down, make a tutorial video, and post it. And every single time, it would do insanely well because there were so many viewers on TikTok for Rocket League that hadn't really seen that stuff before and i was getting so many comments that were like oh my god thank you so much i didn't realize that i should be turning off camera shake yeah please post more and i was like <laughs> okay i got you and um because i felt that void people liked the video they interacted with the video and it ended up right. doing really really well and i posted those same videos to youtube shorts which is also how my youtube channel went from like a thousand subs to like ten thousand twenty thousand in just a little bit of time so um all in all i think growing in rocket league content now i mean to, because 
the tutorial scene, like there's, there's been so much content on tutorials. Like if you were, if I were to post those same videos now, they probably wouldn't do as well, not even close. Also because I posted those videos when free to play happened and right, that huge right. spike in Rocket League players, you had all these new players who wanted to improve. I mean, they were all like probably silver or gold. And because like, even though Rocket League had been out for years and the people who played the game at the start were way beyond that skill level, we had all these new players and I just took advantage of that opportunity. Right. But if you were to post those same tutorial videos now, I feel like they probably wouldn't have a similar amount of success just because Rocket League is kind of on the, on the downtrend currently and not as many people would find it as interesting. So I think uh, growing in itself is a lot of just opportunistic, um, just, being, just being an opportunist and finding the type of content that people are most likely to want to watch at that given time. Right. Because everybody has kind of their own angle to it, and everybody ends yeah. up spinning it in their own way. You have to, you have to do something that's unique. But it's cool because there are like, even though we grew on like in such different ways, there are a lot of similarities with kind of what mm -hmm. works versus what what doesn't. At least generally. Well, well YouTube is very different. So I know that you still post things like that, but YouTube is insanely different. Also, if most of your subscribers know you for learning and know you for uh, tutorial content that's going to continue to work regardless. It's more of a, if you're a new guy looking to hop in on the scene, then it might be a lot more difficult. But um, for you, it's, it's going to continue to work. I mean, I think especially when Rocket League goes to uh, Unreal Engine 5, whenever that's going to be, hopefully soon, <laughs> I think yeah, there's going to be right. another decent jump in, in, in players. And similar to how when Fortnite added their creative mode and you know, you had all these creators creating these really cool and intricate maps. I think when Rocket League has the ability for console players to do workshop maps and to play those workshop maps with friends in private matches, oh my I God. think that's going to just change the game. I think so many people who left Rocket League because they just couldn't find enjoyment in playing ranked, they weren't seeing improvement. I think they're going to end up coming back because they're going to have way more to do. They're going to be able to do workshop maps, so like rings maps. They're going to be able to play hide and seek like Lethemir and all these other creators have done um, in private matches. I mean, as long as all those features are available in Unreal Engine 5, I really hope that they are. <laughs> they better or else Rocket League's... I, I'm losing hope. Um, <laughs> right. When right. that happens, I think it's going to be another uptrend and that is going to be... A, you're going to see some content creators come out of that, mm. I think. Just like how lots of content creators came out of the free-to-play scene me specifically and, and yeah. so many others on TikTok, I think a very similar thing is going to happen um, when Rocket League goes on Unreal Engine 5. Yeah. Dude. People will emerge. Finger, fingers crossed. I, I remember I talked with Verge like six months ago about um, Rocket League implementing more like training features and more and more stuff like that. It, it's, good and, it's good and bad. On the good side, hopefully it'll bring people in. But I know like mm -hmm. with what happened to Fortnite, I mean, when they added like, what, what's, the, what's the word when you can create maps? Creative. Creative. Yeah, just um, creative mode. Big. When they added creative, oh my god, the skill ceiling just just shot up. Everybody just started cranking 90s. And uh, I did you oh. know I used to make Fortnite videos? I, used I to did not know that. Yeah, one of, one of the most viewed videos on my channel is a Fortnite video. Huh. Don't, don't, don't look it up. But yeah. Uh, no, no, I have to. <laughs> <laughs> it was me. It was me in like high school, like 15, 16 years old. I definitely agree in saying that when Rocket League comes out with all these cool features, which hopefully, mm -hmm. um, the skill ceiling is going to rise. But I don't think I don't think I think it's going to be a little bit different than Fortnite because with Fortnite you have the the building feature, and I mean the the possibilities for that are just kind of endless. But because Fortnite is so intricate in the way that you play the game, you like you know you have to be good at aiming and you have to be good with certain guns and all these different things. But also with that, you have to be good at building, and building is such a unique uh feature in a video game and i mean there's so many things you can do with it but with rocket league it's still gonna be the same game at the at the end of the day like mm -hmm. if you if they implement certain training packs and workshop maps for all players and, and all this stuff the ability of everyone to improve easier is going to be there because you'll right. have the ability to play these workshop maps and train in a different way but at the end of the day when you go play rank 2v2 you're not going to be building you know 90s <laughs> building skyscrapers <laughs> you know and just like how 
five years ago, getting to the top rank in Rocket League is insanely different than how it is today. The skill yeah. ceiling has wrote, you know, it's gone up and it will continue to, you know, those players who play consistently at SSL are going to continue to improve. And the people who play at GC, it's like today's diamonds would probably end up being GC five years ago. Right. Right. Um, that's always going to keep on going up, but I think it's just going to make it easier for those people who are on console mm -hmm. and who are hard stuck diamond or hard stuck platinum. It's going to help them be able to get the skills to improve more and be able to rank up. I think that's it's going to it's going to affect the lower ranks much more than the higher ranks because the higher ranks in Rock League are probably they're mostly all on PC and already have access to workshop maps anyways. So I don't think it's going to change too much for the higher ranks, but the lower ranks and on console, that's where it's really going to change. And that's why I'm excited for it, because that's most yeah. of the player base. Most of the player base on Rocket League is gold, platinum, whatever. Um, and a lot of those people have left because they got bored. They're like, man, I can't get past gold. I don't know, man. I'm, I want to go play Fortnite or something like that. Right. But if they implement all these different things to improve and things to do other than play ranked, I think that's going to help. Because I don't know about you. But whenever I'm grinding uh, ranked on stream and I'm playing for five hours straight, by f hour four, my brain stops working. I'm <laughs> playing on no autopilot no and I hate it. I hate it so much. But there's just nothing else really fun to do. Like I could go play extra modes maybe or maybe I could host a tournament with my viewers and play in that. But there's not much else to do that is uniquely entertaining for Rocket League. But right. if there is that extra value, that extra like ability to go play workshop maps with friends way easier um, and all these other things, that's just going to help content creators and it's going yeah. to provide much more entertainment for other people, including the lower ranks. So I'm, yeah. I'm mainly excited for that. But as far as Rocket League itself, man, it's there's a lot there's a lot left to be desired, I think. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think it's the 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 optimistic view is we've gotten this far with not much, so there's some there's something to it. There's something at the. Well, I think the reason that they've been slacking recently, and I don't even want to say slacking. I actually, I I, I don't mind this recent season. I think it's kind of nice. Like it's yeah. not amazing, but I actually kind of like it. But I think the reason they've been slacking a little bit on extra content is because they're working so hard on mm. getting rocket like re because to get it on Unreal Engine Five, you have to rebuild it from the ground up. Like, they're just building basically an entirely new game. It's the same game, but it, they have to rebuild it. So I think they're just putting more effort into that instead yeah. of, like, instead of like rocket pass items and stuff. You know what? No complaints on that. No yeah, no, I'm fine with it. I mean, I, dude, I, yeah. no, I don't use any of those items. Like, <laughs> I like the, some of the goal explosions I like. Some of the goal mm -hmm. explosions have been pretty cool. But other than that, man, I, I don't even use it. I, I just like expanding my garage. I just like having stuff, but I never use it. Right, right. <laughs> well, it's, it's, I, I think I think there is something there. I didn't think about what you said about it, it. Sort of bridges the gap. Like if there's the new launch, it bridges the gap for new players, but it doesn't. So it just it just helps them get better faster. It kind of gives them a yeah. little bit of a runway, whereas mm -hmm. the the experienced players are the ones who probably won't even benefit from that stuff as much anyways. So hopefully it'll just even the playing field a bit. If I think if you're like an SSL player on PC that doesn't make any type of content, um, it's just going to give you a little bit more to do. Like it's going to give you like if you have some friends that you play with on the regular, if you guys are kind of sick of playing ranked that night, instead of just hopping off or getting on another game, you can go play some workshop maps with them or something and just goof off and just like genuinely have a good time. Because I think that's what Rocket League is lacking. I think it's yeah. just all all ranked all the time and the only time you're having a really good time with your buddies is when you're winning right. and if you're losing with your buddies you're you know you all are kind of like ah damn you know we keep on losing it, it sucks I'm, I'm a little annoyed um and rocket league is missing that extra factor of like oh well ranked isn't going all that great why don't we go just goof off for a little bit and just go have some fun like right. there, there is that there you can go do some private matches with weird mutators but not that many people do that that i've noticed yeah that actually enjoy it that often i mean the people who have kind of continued the only people that have really stood the test of time are the people who really want to climb the ladder right yeah. because if you want to climb the ladder there's a big ladder to climb <laughs> there's a big ladder. i mean you know you you got a oh dude, congrats on ssl you got ssl didn't you i got a sell last season for the first time and it was awesome i am i'm right there right now man <laughs> the title for my stream for the past two weeks has been are we getting ssl today <laughs> i'm only three games away and then yeah dude i've been one game away from ssl just this season which is still early season which is awesome because I'm, I'm i'm ahead of schedule 
But also because of that, like two days ago, I got into ranks and I was up against Daniel. <laughs> and like, you Love know, that. I'm sitting here like, dude, this is not fair, man. <laughs> like I'm up against a, a SSG in Grand Champion 3. And then like last night I was playing and I had Hawkser on my team. Thank yeah. God. You know, it's, it's nice when they're on my team. <laughs> but um, it's crazy how in the early season, like the first month or two or the first month or so of a new season, you have all these pro players that usually you know rank in and sit around like upper grand champ two and then they have to grind through grand champ three just to get to ssl and then for the people who are trying to get to ssl for the first time have to go up against these people <laughs> and it's just yeah. like dude this guy was like top 10 last season <laughs> i am just trying to get there for the first time this is pain <laughs> it, it, it's just, it's a struggle i mean ssl is you don't realize how difficult it is to to maintain that rank and stay in that rank until you're up there tenacity nobody i like even when i talk to players that are like gc like c3 gc1 mm -hmm. nobody understands how wide the gap is between gc1 and ssl a lot of people think it's like gold is here grand champ is here ssl is here and it's like gold is here grand champ one is here SSL, SSL might even be further. Yeah, that gap yeah. might be further. It's in. You could speak to it better. You could speak to it all better. the time. People ask like, the, hey, dude, when people come into my stream for the first time, odds are they're gonna ask one of a few things. But one of the main things is, how do I get out of insert rank here and get into insert rank here? <laughs> and most of the time, it's like people who are in like champ or GC. And I'm, usually, I just go with the classic. I mean, a lot of it's just the consistency of it. You gotta, you know, make sure that you're making the right decisions. Stop throwing the ball down the field. Yep. If you have possession. an opportunity to take control of it, keep your possession. If you see, if you are gonna throw it down the field, if there's a teammate in the midfield waiting, throw it their way. That way, it's a pass instead of just a give up of possession. There, there's so many little little tips that will help. But if you throw a GC one player into an SSL lobby they are just going to be completely lost because the oh, yeah. speed, the tempo, the consistency, it's all there. I mean, pretty much if you're in a 3v3 SSL lobby, when a player touches the ball, they're doing, they have a plan. They're doing something with that ball. Yeah. They're going to throw it to a teammate. They're going to control it for a dribble and they're definitely going to get it past the first guy. That's yeah. the main difference I see is like when an SSL uh, slows the play down and goes for a dribble, Odds are that they're getting it past one person. That first yeah. guy who challenges, who's first in rotation, who just throws themselves into the challenge, the Dang. dribble, uh, the offensive guy's probably going to get it around him and might even get it around two. But the defense is just immaculate most of the time. Oh, it's it's super hard to score. Uh, backboard defense is incredible crazy consistent and it just the tempo i mean i'm i'm learning a lot i'm getting to that point i think where i'm able to not only just stay up with like the tempo but also be effective in, on the offense and defensive sides but there's so many times where i'm playing a game of like high grand champ three up against ssls where i'm just sitting here like when do i go <laughs> i'm just sitting here watching them like everyone's on the sidewall just banging it clearing it and it, it's just going everywhere and i'm just, just like running up I... and down no, <laughs> i'm just like when should i, when should I I jump for this i don't know uh, oh, oh oh he just double flip reset and i'm just sitting here in the back of the net oh shit the ball's in my net okay and it's like there's it's so difficult and people don't quite understand the level yeah. of difference like if, if you throw me into gc1 lobby i mean it's it's not easy because gc1s are good but yeah. the difference is is palpable it's just crazy yeah the way i like to explain it and a lot of people have like found this to found this to make sense it's like is when you're going from zero to GC, wherever you start out to GC, you're learning a lot of the basics. You're learning the rules. You're learning how to rotate back post. You're learning, you yeah. know, when, when all these things come into play. And then once you get GC1 and you're trying to push to SSL, you have to learn every time you can break those rules when it's okay to break it. Because when you get to the 3v3 SSL lobby, like, there's no back post. You're just going for the... Uh, there, there is on some level, but it's just... It's it's complete pattern recognition speed. I don't know. That's how I see so, it. No, no, no. I've got I've got some really good buddies of mine. One of which is actually the guy that introduced me to Rocket League. He's that guy that brought his yeah. PS4 over to my house. Now back then, like it's not like he was gold and I was silver. We both sucked. But um, <laughs> you know, I, I definitely have more hours than him in the same amount of time. Um, so I'm a good bit better. Mm -hmm. But he usually sits around champ three, grand champ one. I think he might have peaked at like very very low grand champ too and yeah. when i play with them i try to give them little tips here and there 
But then, you know, sometimes I kind of contradict myself because I'm like, oh, dude, you should have gone for that. And he was like, well, you just told me I should never go for these. And I'm like, yeah, but there, there are certain times like it's sit- I, he hates when I say this, but I'm just like, it's situational. Yeah. So there are certain times where you should be going for the ball because it's a better touch for you, even though I'm first in rotation. So, yeah. you know, just little things like that. And it just all goes into game sense. It's just the more that you play the more that you realize and, and the more that you understand about, you know, positioning and who should be going for the ball in a given situation, yeah. whether or not you should pass it. Like there are some situations where you need to pass the ball every single time. And if you're in an SSL lobby, they will. Like yeah. if you're, if you have your teammate or if you are pushing onto their side of the field, say you're around midfield and you're on the left side of the field and you have a teammate who's top right, you pass to him every time because that's yeah. the odds of that being scored as opposed to you just dribbling the ball and trying to go for a flick are way higher. Right. And that's just something that lower ranked players, just, they just don't see. They have like the tunnel vision. So all they see is a goal and one defender in the goal. <laughs> and if you can flick the ball and get around them, you're good to go. But they don't see the teammate on the right side of the field waiting yeah. for a pass who's probably definitely going to score, you know? Yeah. Well, it's completely different because all the decisions you're basing on, like a, 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 I, I was talking with Com about this, and Com is like, if if I was to go back and like if you're gonna put me back down in you know plat, and I had no skills and I had to relearn the game from scratch, Com told me he's like, I'd probably spend eighty percent of my time learning mechanics until I got to high GC, and he's just like, the problem is when you learn like learning how to outplay champ champ defenders and diamond defenders, it isn't it isn't like productive because you learn you learn what outplay works on a champ one defender yeah. and then you get to gc2 and you're going for flicks and they're saving every flick and you're like it's impossible to score well it's like yeah. no you need to look for the because t- it just completely flips on its well, head at the high level thing that my friends do often is they'll they'll either they'll like take control and try for a dribble when it's not when it's not a good time like they'll it'll be a booming clear onto our side of the field and instead of booming it back or booming it onto the sidewall for a teammate or hitting it off into the corner, they'll try and take control of the ball and dribble it right there, like in front of the in, in, in front, front of the net. Yeah, and they just get instant challenged. Or what they'll do is, if they have a little space with the ball, they'll you know they'll jump up and go for an air dribble. But once you get to a certain rank, like GC about GC two is when it really starts. Yeah, they're pre jumping you every time. Yep. And if you yep. go up into the air in SSL, someone's going to pre jump you. You yep. either need to be very very quick in getting into the air so you can get around that one person. Or you fake them, like it looks like you're going for an, uh, a hard touch, but then you go for a flipper set. Just something like that. But touches that work in Champ Three, Grand Champ One, they just—it's not the same. Like yeah. the defense, it, it just is way different and way, way more fast, higher skilled. Once you get to a certain rank, and that's just like the things that work yeah. at Champion Three or GC One are not going to work once you get to GC Two. And I think that's a big reason why people struggle to rank up out of GC One. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why one of the reasons why, going back to what you are talking about earlier, people ask, like, I'm champ one, what do I need to do to rank up? Like, I could give you, like, when I watch somebody's C1 or C2 replay, like, I could give you specific feedback on how you could do things better in this situation. Like, I think replay analysis is, like, the quickest way to give you, like, an easy edge on your opponents. But long term, man, like, you just got to get better. You just got to get better. (laughs) These these people come into my stream thinking I'm like some amazing teacher and they want all these intricate details about how I think you can can get out of diamond. I'm like, eh, you just got to play the game. (laughs) Go into free play, bro. You'll you'll learn. Like, you know, do a replay analysis on yourself. I always like to say you have to actively be thinking because what a lot of people do is, you know, they'll go play ranked and then they go on autopilot. So they're not even necessarily thinking hardcore about the decisions that they're making. They're just bang in the ball the other side of the, like how hard can i hit this ball every time i touch it like that's the type of thing that they do and you got to stop that mentality and you got to start thinking if it's your turn to touch the ball what can i do in this like sh- like it's situational so should i dribble it should i boom it downfield to a teammate should i hit it up, hit it into my own corner that way i can maintain possession you know you, you rarely ever see a lower ranked player below like champion do a back pass or instead of like if you're third in rotation and they clear it into the midfield instead of turning on it and booming it back yep. into their corner take it and take it back into your corner and grab some boost and let your teammates get back on and settled on defense and then boom it downfield like there's so many things um that people just don't realize but it just takes time it just takes it's the game sense you learn it as you play and you have yeah. to actively be thinking about it 
What's up guys, Luke from the future here, and I'm interrupting because I actually just created a second YouTube channel. I know it sounds crazy, but as of today, I've started uploading weekly IRL content. I'm a little bit nervous, but my goal is to get that channel to 100K, hopefully by the end of the year. And so if you're one of the loyal subs and you've been watching to this point, I'd really appreciate your help getting there. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of the video. What I was telling you a little bit earlier, um, I think before we started recording is like one of the things I've been very thankful about um, when it comes to making the content that I've made and learning the things yeah. that I've learned is that I've more or less been completely self-taught um, minus a few tips here and there by some fellow content creators about certain things. But I have built two PCs by myself. Um, my first PC, I... Um, and I would recommend this for anyone who wants to get a PC is buy the part separately, build it yourself. That way, if anything ever happens to that PC, which odds are eventually it will, or if you ever want to upgrade, you can do it yourself. No problem. Piece of cake. And so I bought all the parts separately for my PC. I built it myself. Um, and that was for my, that was my very first one. I used that for streaming and for gaming. And then I ended up getting like some frame drops. The stream quality wasn't as good as I knew it could have been. So I bought a second PC. This one I bought pre-built, but the pretty cheap. And then I just upgraded all myself. So I put a new motherboard in there. I put more RAM. I put a new cooler. I put a new graphics card. I did all these things. But that made it to where now I've helped my friend build his PC. I've, done, I've given a lot of my friends um, like tips on how to do it. And... If anything ever happens to either of my PCs, I can fix it myself pretty easily. But along with that, I've also learned all about streaming software, editing software. I can pretty much edit anything I want to. I can add, I can pretty much make my stream whatever I want it to be. I can add any any intricate details to it and it'll take me basically no time. And the ability to know all of that, I feel like is one of the best things that have that I've um, acquired wow. from my time as being as a content creator because I am now tech savvy. Like now I can build PCs, I can run editing software and I can do all these things. These are skills that I have learned basically just off of YouTube. Like if I've ever had a question about how to do something, I'll either look it up on Google or I'll look it up on YouTube and boom, answers right there. Like we live in such a great time right now where you can become almost an expert and pretty much anything. Like yeah. if I ever have a question about something, if the answer is right there, you just got to find it and you just got to have the patience and the the desire to learn about it and you're good to go. And yeah. um like I get a lot of questions from people about certain things too. Like I've got a like I get I've basically convinced all of my friends to get PCs um just because I want to be able to play with them and because <laughs> there there, it is. there's that age <laughs> uh, there's that age old uh, argument of like is it really worth it to get a PC like I've got a I got a new console you know my console runs at 120 FPS I got the new Xbox and I don't know man I just don't really think getting a PC is worth it and I'm like all right so cool you got a console right you can run 120 FPS not not too bad right. Yeah. All right, so let's say uh, let's say that new the newer console comes out and it's got even better specs. It can run 200 frames per second, right? So now you got to go spend another six or seven hundred dollars on that. When you could have just spent a little bit extra, maybe a few hundred, maybe a thousand, maybe maybe even a few hundred more, and gotten a PC, right? So now instead of having to buy a brand new console, you just upgrade the PC if you ever want it to improve a little better. But also, not only can you play Rocket League, but you can play any other game ever, pretty much. You can also listen to music through the same headphones, listen to Spotify, which I think consoles can probably do that too. But now you can run Discord and then also yeah. you can edit. You, you, if you ever want to go in that direction, you can use the internet to edit things. You can browse the internet. You can use it for work purposes. Like there's the benefits of having a PC go well beyond just gaming. Like now you actually have a, a thing that you can do physical work on and yeah. it, it will do it well. Like I think, that's the main that's my main argument for why i think consoles are just not at the same level as pcs um and, and the argument with consoles is just like oh well i don't need all that stuff it's like you don't need it now but when you're an adult you, you might need it like you yeah. never know it, it, it's it's nice to have it there i am i am i am so with you i'm the worst i'm the worst when i was working with my friends they go to the library to work and i'm like guys i got two monitors at home i <laughs> might be better yeah, for the same you know, I, I could literally work twice as fast like it, it's it's, and and, it's and you're so you're so right though about like all the other benefits too. It's like man, if you can do it, switch and you'll probably shoot up a rank 
in Rocket League. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, like, you know, nowadays consoles are, the processing power is getting great, but also the price is going up. So it's almost the same price just to get a PC. And now you can spend, what, you could get a 250 uh, 240 hertz monitor for like 150, 200 bucks. It's ridiculous. It's and ridiculous. people don't quite understand. 120 doesn't sound so bad, right? Like 120 is pretty good, right? No, play on 240 hertz. It'll change. It'll change your world. It'll, it'll change just, your life. You will be in awe. The first time I had my buddy that I convinced to buy a PC play on 240, he just sat there and was like, "Yeah, this is amazing." Like I, I, I never thought it would be this nice, and well, it is. It's when we're nice. I think so many people underestimate like in a mechanical game like Rocket. This is like such a side tangent, but I think it's so interesting. It is actually so like such a crutch. I don't know if that's the right word. It, it is really crippling to play on 60 hertz if mm. everybody in your ranked lobby is on 240. It's actually like it's and like I don't think people actually understand this. Like I I can I can hang in pro lobbies when I'm on my computer. If I was on 60 hertz, I think I'd lose oh, no. to GC ones. I think Absolutely I would lose not. to GC ones. Yeah. Um, I still remember, you know, back in the day, back well before I did content creation. Um, one of the first major upgrades that I did, I, I was still on PS4. Back in that day, I was playing on like a 65 inch TV, which you, you know the input lag is crazy, but you don't really even notice it because at that time you're chilling. I think I, I was probably around champ one, champ two. Um, and then I learned from a friend, if you just buy a monitor, even though you're still on PS4, the frame rate not, isn't necessarily going to go up. Um, but the input lag is just remarkable. Like, you know, yep, most yep. monitors have a one millisecond, um, input delay or whatever, whatever response it might be. time or something. Yeah. I yeah. Know, response I time. And so the first time I played on a monitor, as opposed to a TV, I went immediately and just started winning all of my games and just started like shot up to uh, champion three and then i hit grand champ for the first time um on a monitor and it was just like people don't realize what you're missing out on until you physically get to experience it it's yeah just, oh, man, it's, it's a cult it's so worth it it's, it's so worth it it's the pc cult it's a pc cult. Yeah, it, it, but it's like i used to be that guy I used to be the guy that's like ah that was pc nerds you know i i, I can i can visualize exactly what you look like you're sweaty you probably haven't showered in three days you got <laughs> long hair and he's all greasy and stuff and ah, it's just not the type of guy i want to be i don't care that much and even if I wasn't doing content right now, even if I just had a PC with one monitor, I, I would still, I would still so do All it. All day. It's so worth it. Yeah. Well, I, there is something, there's also something in there. You're, you're going, going back to what you were talking about earlier with getting started. Um, you were like, you've had this mentality of just like, so you learn anything you need to learn. You just learn it as you go. I, I notice like when I talk to so many like people who want to be creators, they're like very much like, they're like, what they're like, if this, then that creator, they're like, if yeah. I, if I had GC, then I could start making videos. If I knew yep. how to edit, then I could yep. start making videos. If I knew X, Y, and Z, then I would start making videos. When in reality, it's like all those things are, now. you just figure it out. You're going to suck at first. Go watch yeah. my first video on, uh, on TikTok. <laughs> not, not, your, not, your, <laughs> not your proudest. Yeah, I mean, proudest it's just, well, it's just a clip. There's nothing crazy. Like, it's just a clip. And, you know, is it entertaining? Well, maybe if you watch my stream and you like my, con like, if you like watching my stream, you might find it kind of cool. Yeah. But, um, no, it's not particularly entertaining. There's nothing that stands out <laughs> about it. And it's whatever. That's the same for my first 15 or 20 videos. Even yeah. like, if I went back and watched that first tutorial video, like, my face saturation is all bad. It's terrible. The camera quality is bad. I mean, honestly, the video itself is not high quality. Yeah. It's just that I took advantage of, of, you know, that situation and the lack of tutorial content. But if you also go through my videos, you will notice a steady increase of quality as you yes. scroll up. And that's the thing is like your videos are going to be terrible probably when you first start, but you're learning. And that's the whole point. Nobody is going to start off in their first video, just be insanely high quality yeah. unless they have previous experience. So if you, if you want to get into it, just get into it. Like, I have people who come into my chat, and then they, of course, I have quite a few people who are, like, new streamers who want to learn and who want to improve and all this stuff. And some people are like, ah, oh, dude, I'm only Diamond. Like, no one's going to want to watch me. I'm like, bro, no one gives a shit what rank you are. Yeah. It's all about the personality. If you have a camera and a, and a decent quality mic, and if you're just a, a boisterous personality, a guy who is just funny to watch, people will watch you. Yeah. I mean, it's going to take time. Like you, you can't expect in the first three or six months that you're going to start averaging hundreds of viewers. Cause that's just not going to happen. 
But if you put in the effort, if you put in the time, like if, if I put in the same amount of effort, but I was like a champ player or like a diamond player, even a plat player, I still, I might not have had the same amount of success, but I'd still have a decent bit of success. Like right. if I put the exact same amount of work and effort that I put into the content that I have now, guaranteed. I mean, I see plenty of videos by lower ranked players that go viral just because they're either funny or, you know, something, yeah. something about the video is good. And anybody, it doesn't matter what rank you are, anybody can can yeah. do well in the content creation scene as long as you're willing to put that effort in and, and, and work hard at it. Um, yeah. But you just got to start because your shit, it's going to suck. You're, 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 <laughs> I love your really mentality. Bad. This is it's my gonna, philosophy, dude. <laughs> you're going to suck. It's going to be terrible. You, but you, you, you got to learn, you know, like look at other creators, see what they're doing. I've set a few trends on TikTok, like the way that I format my videos mm -hmm where basically there's three layers. The first layer is just the very background. I zoom in to where the scoreboard is fully um, on the very top part. And then I have my camera in between the two lines. And then I have the actual gameplay in the middle. And on the bottom, there's like a blurred out section where the description is. Now, I started doing that quite a long time ago. It, it's changed, you know, I've improved upon it since then, but now I see a lots of other Rocket League content creators do that similar format for TikTok, which is the vertical format. and right. I'm, of course, I'm totally fine with it, but do that. Like, look at those, look at other creators, see what they're doing that is working and learn how to do it or improve upon it and adapt it. Like, there's so many things that you can do to improve your own content. But one of the ways is looking at what other creators are doing. I mean, as right. long as you're not copying it verbatim, you can be inspired by lots of different things and you can learn lots of different things by looking at other creators and what they're doing to be successful or just look it up on YouTube, you know? Like if you wanna learn yeah. how to record your videos in a higher quality, go look it up on YouTube. If you wanna learn how to transfer content from your PC to your phone, look it up on YouTube. Dude, like, that was, I did that this morning. I didn't know how to get these photos from my phone to my to my computer and I need to add them for a video. People think like the people who are making videos have it figured out. I have no clue what I'm doing. Like, yeah. I have no, I've absolutely- no, I mean, There's plenty of things that I, I mean, I'm looking up the stuff all the time, but I'm also like, once I look it up once and I learn it, now it's there. Now I know what I'm doing. But I mean, if you if you're interested in how I do my stuff, like I use OBS to record my my content. I use it to stream, and then there's also something called OBS Replay Buffer, which saves the last 30 seconds up to five minutes of whatever is happening in OBS. And you just hotkey, which is like a button that you bind to a certain action. And I press a button on my stream deck, and the last five minutes of whatever happened gets saved. And then I trim that up in DaVinci Resolve, which is a free editing software, which is the one that I use. And then I use iTunes. Like I plug my phone up to an iPhone, like a lightning cord that's plugged into my PC. And then I, uh, iTunes has this thing called file transfer. And I just transfer the files from my PC to my phone or from my phone to my PC, whatever I need. And that's it. And then I just use an editing software on my phone um, to edit TikToks called Keen Master, which is also, well, it's free, but I have the upgraded version, so there's no watermarks. But yeah, simple steps right there. There's other ways you can do it, but that's the way that's worked best for me. It's not It's not like a secret, like massive production team, like behind, behind the curtain there that's like... <laughs> Now I've got one editor, and um, the only time that he does stuff for me is when it's a longer video. Other than that, everything that I do is done by myself. That's everything. insane, dude. That's insane. And you've got to the point you're at. Wow, that makes me feel bad. I, I'm out here thinking, like, maybe I need another editor to take it to the next level. You're making me feel like maybe I just need to work harder. Maybe no, I, I mean, I, I'm not, I don't want to. Hey, so uh, there was a period where I worked all day, almost every day. I was posting, like, twice a day on TikTok, and... Like I said earlier, you, you don't want to do burnout. So what I've kind of done is I limit myself, not limit, but I try to just set like certain goals for myself. So I want to post on TikTok about three times a week. But nowadays, I've also gotten the ability to go live on TikTok while I'm also live on Twitch. Um, and so when I go live on TikTok, usually it does pretty good. And I get anywhere between about maybe 500 new followers to like maybe 1,500, just depending on the yeah. day, I guess. Um, and so that's made it... It's made me feel a lot better about not posting sometimes because I'm like, well, at the very least, even if I don't put in the effort to post, I'm still getting some growth. You know, I'm still there's still content that's out there for my viewers. And it's really no extra effort to me except just having it, it there. So I usually try to post about three times a week, maybe three or four on TikTok. And then for YouTube. Uh, I actually try to post a little bit more often on YouTube because you, I, I really want to grow there and I want to make sure that I have that sustainable growth. And so either I'll post a YouTube short or I'll post like a, like, you know, a 30 second to a minute long clip. Maybe there's music behind it, maybe not, it, whatever it may be. And then I want to post like a few minute long video, maybe once or twice a week, and then a long video 
once every few weeks. And so like yeah. I let, make sure that I'm not overdoing myself, but with with all that, I'm still in my 20s and I still want to like enjoy life. I live in yeah. Florida. There's so much to like I'm probably going skydiving tomorrow. Like my buddy called me <laughs> True. Like an hour before I got on here with you, and he was like, "Hey, do you want to go skydiving tomorrow?" And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, let's I, go I'll, I'll clear tomorrow. my sky. Yeah. I'll, I can clear my. I'll yeah. go talk to the boss." And so <laughs> it's also very important to like still enjoy life because I don't know. Um, the only reason I I love doing what I do and why I work so hard is uh, my only life goal is to make enough money to live comfortably and be able to experience the world, you know, travel, be able to buy some of the luxuries that I, you know, that I desire, like, an, you know, maybe kind of nice car or whatever it may be. Um, yeah. But also really love what I do and enjoy my work and have the freedom and the availability to go on certain trips and like um, do all that, but also still love what I do. And right. that's what, and I, so far that I'm, I'm succeeding at that. And I'm very proud of myself for that. But I think it's also very important to remember to enjoy yourself and to go live life especially me being in florida like there's the beach right there we have this really nice neighborhood pool that we go to often um you know we can like i'm going to dallas are, are you, you're gonna be at worlds right yes sir yeah so yes, i'm sir. sure i'll see you there but like to go the availability to go on that trip i also bought a laptop i think i might have told you about so i have um I bought like a twenty five hundred dollar gaming laptop that I can game and stream on at the same time, Ooh. along with like hotel streams. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah let's go. Go. I've already I've been doing that quite often. Um, like last week I went to a buddy's house for his birthday. He lives in Melbourne, Florida, which is a three hour drive from here, and um, I brought everything. So I've got my um my laptop. I've got like this laptop cooler that props it up to where it's eye level, and I've got a mic, a a second camera um like a professional camera and wow. all the all the wiring and stuff and an extra light that I just bring in a backpack and I stream just like normal and it it was a successful stream and I can do that from anywhere in the world and that's another thing that I'm super excited about cuz I could go to France right now yeah. and as long as they got good wifi I can go to work like nothing's different you know it's great yeah I I think it's like when when so, when you're in it for the right reasons too it makes it so much easier to show up every day people are like so I I often talk to people and they're like Wow, you, you've you been uploading consistently for two years. How do you upload consistently for two years? Like I can barely upload consistently for three weeks. And I'm like, well, that's because to you, it's a chore to upload. And to me, it's yeah. something that I get to do and that I enjoy doing. And it's, it, and, and when you reframe that, it's because like, ah, trust, like I'll, I'll be the first to say, like I do not have like, this like unbreakable work work ethic i'm not i'm like i am not i am not superman like i i have the desire to just scroll through insta reels all day just as much as you do like i promise yeah. you that but for me it's just like oh this is something i look forward to doing and it's fun to do so i do it um and the more you can reframe that in your mind the longer you're gonna stay in the game to ultimately hit the results. And so I talked to you and it's clear, like you obviously love going live and streaming. So for you, it's not a chore to hit the go live button. Whereas for the person who quits after, cause you can only discipline for so long, right? Yeah. For the person who can only hang in it for three to six months. Well, the reason is cause they, they never did it cause they really liked doing it. They always did it cause they were waiting for that thousand follower number to cross over. They were waiting for the Twitch I partner. They were waiting totally for- agree. Yeah. If, if you're in it just to experience the growth and to make money, then you possibly, you might succeed, but you're not going to love it. And if the odds of you succeeding are going to be way lower than someone who just genuinely enjoys it. And one of the things I've definitely noticed is as a viewer, you can tell, you can always tell just how the streamer is. Like there's some people who um, will watch you just to watch you, but I, I don't have my viewer count turned on while I stream because I don't want to know. Um, it doesn't matter if I have a hundred people in there five people in there or a thousand but no i, I don't want to know because back when i did have the viewer count turned on and sometimes this happens you know now but i'll be playing ranked and i'll be losing and i, I get annoyed and i hate saying that because sometimes people ask me like it's nasty how do you stay so calm when you play ranked and i'm like oh honestly dude i really don't care if i win or lose you know i'm just in here to entertain i'm in here to have fun and whatever but then if i'm losing like five games in a row like <laughs> i can tell and i'm just yeah. like mother i'm like oh my god <laughs> And then, like, it just happened last night, bro. Um, you know, I streamed for, like, five hours. And at the four-hour mark, my brain starts turning to mush, and I start making way more mistakes. And earlier in that stream, somebody asked that question. I was like, oh, guys, I don't care. I'm just chilling. I'm just having fun. And then I started getting annoyed when I was losing a little bit more. And someone made a comment there, like, huh, it really doesn't seem like he... It, it doesn't seem like he doesn't care that he's losing. It seems like he cares a lot. And I'm like, yeah, that's a good point. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just competitive here. Um, but the point is, like... 
if you're in it for the wrong reasons, you won't last. But also the viewers, they'll they'll be able to tell. Like you yeah. gotta genuinely want to do it and you gotta love it. There are some times when I'm thinking about streaming and I'm just like, oh man, like I'm tired and, and whatever. But then as soon as I get in there and I'm like getting my stuff ready, I'm setting up the software, and right at, right as I go live, I'm just like this I, you know it, it kind of it's like a, almost a sense of relief like it's just the yeah. build up to get to that point most of the time it's not that at all but like there are some days where you're just tired or where you're just you know whatever yeah. and then as soon as you get there you press that go live button and there are some people in your chat being like oh he's live let's go you know you're just like hell yes yeah, man. Like, yes awesome you know i love it and then when it comes to posting on tiktok there are some times where i'm just like i have no idea what to post today i i am so lost i just I don't know. And you're just sitting there. You're kind of stressed out. You got to find certain clips to th think of what you're going to be posting. But when you figure it out and when I'm in the process of like editing it, that's when I'm like, oh, yes, let's go. Like I'm excited. I'm, I'm coming up with ideas and I'm loving it. And then there are some days where I know exactly what I'm going to post and I'm excited to get in there and start working the content because I know that my my uh, my followers are going to enjoy this video and I'm yeah. excited to see how they re respond to it. And I'm excited to interact with the comments and and, and learn you know new things about these viewers. And there is a big sense of uh, of excitement that I feel when it comes to posting certain things or going live. And um, that's something that you can't fabricate and yeah. it needs to be it needs to be um, true and it needs to be genuine, yeah. especially if you're looking to get into it when you're yeah, when it's raw and people can tell that you enjoy what you're doing. It comes through on the content. I mean, I go in people's streams all the time. Just how just how it's 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 palpable in the air when the, a streamer is annoyed that they're losing, which happens to me. I got to get better at that. It's something I'm trying to improve on. Yeah. Um, but just how you can go into someone's stream and you know if they're in a good mood or not you can just yeah. tell Instantly. um they can tell if you're if you genuinely enjoy it like even even if there's a point in the stream where a streamer is annoyed because you're losing if you watch the entire stream when they go live or at the very end you can tell if that streamer genuinely loves what they do and genuinely loves their their viewers and their community and when you can tell that they genuinely love what they're doing it just makes everything so much more effortless and like as a streamer it makes everything a lot easier because you're able to make connections with your viewers and at the end of the day as a streamer that's what you're supposed to do like that's all that matters is that you're con like you're communicating and you're connecting with the the viewers that come into your stream that's it it's it's definitely a lot different than youtube though because youtube yeah. i mean it's not super different because as a youtuber you're doing the same thing but because it's live it's it's just way more real you know yeah, it's more about, I mean, because I actually, uh, truthfully, I, I don't know the Twitch game that re well, but every time I get on live on Twitch, like, my mentality is just, I'm going to try to talk to a very, instead of trying to speak to everybody, I'm just going to try to speak to one person in the audience. I'm going to imagine there's one person there, or I'll, I'll literally find people, and that's kind of the, what I'm trying to do. But I, I, yeah. I don't know the Twitch side. I'll be the first to admit it. Well, it's a skill. And, you know, that's another thing. It's like, if you go watch one of my first streams, you think that I'm able to do the things that I can do now back when I first started? Absolutely not. I was not very entertaining. I mean, <laughs> I'd like to think I was kind of entertaining, but compared to yeah. what I do now and like the type of persona that I have and the energy that I have on my stream, it's, it's so different than when I first started. So yeah. like, and, and I look at Alpha Cup, I think Alpha Cup is, is a guy that I really look up to uh in the streaming game and i know that we're kind of on similar areas right now as far as like the growth that we've had um but he's been doing it for so much longer and he's mm -hmm. also insanely good at the game and it, it is just insanely impressive what he's able to do on his stream and in, in the sense of like being able to communicate with his stream while playing at the highest level in the game like top 20 and whenever i go look at his stream and he's doing really really well it's not like a sense of jealousy it's just like god dang dude like yeah. how do you how do you do that how do you play in, <laughs> in the top 10 in the world and like while he's rotating back to get boost he's just looking at shit <laughs> like, yeah, oh no guys just, so he's just looking like completely not even looking at the screen he's looking at his chat and he's like answering a question he's like oh no dude yeah tonight we're just gonna chill with the boys blah, blah, blah. and then he looks back and then he gets a like, double flip reset and i'm like, what? <laughs> like how do you do that and it's just it just takes time like he's been doing streaming for much longer than i have and uh he's just it, it, at once you get to a certain point you don't even think about it like it's not in his head he yeah. just knows when he has time to look at the chat and he's at that skill level 
he's he's played the game for that long where you know certain things are just muscle memory it's just reflex at that point yeah. and he's able to do all these amazing things so i definitely look at him for inspiration because i want to get to that level i want to be able to play mm -hmm. at ssl consistently and provide that style of entertaining content while also maintaining the the communication with the with the chat and stuff but yeah. Regardless of what, at what level you're playing at, being able to communicate while playing the game and like looking at chat, reading chat while playing the game, that's a skill that you develop over time. And also just the ability to communicate with your chat, uh, whether you're playing or not. And like, you can kind of compare it to public speaking in a way, Yeah. but it's, it's definitely not the same, but it's, it's similar. So public speaking, people are looking at you with their eyes. And when it comes to streaming, people are looking at you but through a lens of a screen so it's, it's it is very different but you can feel the pressure like you, you yeah. definitely can tell like you know that these people are looking at you and if you do something wrong or say something stupid they're going to be there to judge you <laughs> um yeah but it's just, it's very interesting it doesn't how it take, all works out yeah it doesn't take away from from any i think i think the big lesson there is it's all it's all skills man like YouTube, Twitch, it's all just a combination of skills. Creating a good title, writing a good title, that's a skill. Creating a good thumbnail, that's a skill. Like people will sit down to record, a I still do it to this day, like they'll sit down to record their first YouTube video. And I know a lot of people will like try to record the audio, and they'll mess it up and they'll restart and they'll mess it up and they'll restart. Oh yes. I, I still do it. And people take that sign of not being good at something or like that sign of discomfort as a feeling that you shouldn't do it. And I'm like, no, 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 that's, that's all backwards. It's a skill. The you stumbling over your words or something is a sign that you still need to improve at the skill. It's not a sign that, yeah. you know, it would be unreasonable if you sat down to record your first YouTube video and you did a 15 minute one take and it was immaculate. Like, yeah, I, I try to do one takes these days. And the only reason I can do a one take is because my editor makes me sound way better than I actually like. You don't see all the all the all the fubs. you want to know uh, you want to know a good way to do one takes. What do, what do you do? Just do it live. That's what I've been doing. Really? So whenever I record a YouTube video, uh, it's rare, if not never happens anymore, to where I record it. Um, the only time that I record things off of stream is if it's for an ad. or um, But even then, I try to record it on stream. So I try, it, like I mentioned before, almost all of my content is based around my stream. And so what I do, even when I have to do a sponsored post on TikTok, like I, I had this sponsored post from Epic Games a few weeks ago, months ago, where it was for Fortnite. And so what they wanted me to do is they wanted it to start with Rocky League. I lose a game and then be like, oh, man, you know, I'm just, I can't, I keep on losing. I need something different. And then, oh, I hear, I hear Fortnite has no building. Let's go try that out. And then I play a game. So what I did yeah. was. I didn't know I that was just, sponsored. That was sponsored. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, sponsored that's, that's, time, that's yeah. clever. That's clever. Yeah. And so what Anyways. I did was, is like, while I was playing ranks, I just waited until I got told my chat. I'm like, guys, I'm about to record a video. Um, I'm not going to try and lose a game, but whenever I end up losing a game, I'm going to start and like, you know, I'm going to film this, uh, sponsored post. And so I lost the game and I was like, all right, you know, and then I did everything. It just felt way more genuine because of that. And it was also way easier for me because even if I mess up, yeah. I mean, it's live. I can't, I can't go back and redo it. Um, so it comes off mm. as, as super genuine and I don't, I don't have the chance to make a mistake. Even when I do intros, like, so what I'll do is, is sometimes I'll have an idea for a video and I'll be like, all right, so today we're going to open up all the crates from this season because I didn't open any of them. And so sure. I'll start my stream and I'll be like, oh, hey guys, you know, welcome back to YouTube channel. And then I'll have my chat say like, hi, YouTube. That way the YouTube channel can see it. Yeah. Um, and I'll just explain what we're doing and then I'll get right into it. And then I'll just have my editor go in and cut things up a little bit further down. And, uh... I've actually loved doing it that way because yeah. I'm kind of a perfectionist. And when I did try and record it off stream, I would sit there for an hour just to get like a few paragraphs of dialogue. And I'm sitting here because I don't know, dude, it's just like sometimes my brain just goes, dude. it turns into mashed potatoes, I think, because I'll be looking at the camera and then I'll just forget what I'm trying to say. Like I'm just sitting here looking directly in the camera right now and I will just forget everything that I was intending to say. And I'm like, God dang it. I just have to restart from the, from the beginning. Um, that, so I respect funny. you guys. The YouTubers who can, who can do that, I respect y'all so much because I, I could not. Well, uh, no. And the only reason I can is because I've been doing this like when I, I started doing YouTube when I was 12. This, oh is my. My, this is my third YouTube channel. I just launched a fourth YouTube channel, actually. I just launched like a, like a personal one to talk more about this stuff. Like, oh wait, like yeah, I saw that. your uh, I saw your Twitter post about needing a uh, full time cameraman. That's right. That's, that's gonna right. be cool. It, that's it, gonna be awesome, though. I'm 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 excited for it. But 
the the thing that people don't realize is like it's all mentality like yeah. like you going on stream and recording the and recording there it doesn't actually change the way you're i mean maybe it changes a little bit how you present it to the stream but when that content reaches youtube it's more or less the same YouTube video that if it wasn't on that if it wasn't recorded on stream, but the mentality of you being on stream now all that like anxiety and all the retakes and yeah. all the redos that goes away because you're just like I'm just gonna do that, it and however it is it. it is that's so clever that's so in my eyes it was exactly yeah in my eyes it was a workaround so the way I thought about it was like well first of all this is interesting you know if if, it, if I'm planning out a YouTube video and it's interesting content anyways like opening up all my crates or like drops from that season. It should be done on my live stream because that's interesting content. I think I did that exact video, um, you know, at the end of last season and I did it on stream and I got the most amount, I got peaked at the most amount of viewers I ever got it, like 2000. That's awesome. And that was like while I was opening these crates. And so if I didn't, if I did that off of stream, I would have never had that. And my viewers wouldn't have ever got to experience that with me. And then it's even cooler for them when, if they're, if they are subscribed to my YouTube channel, it's so cool for them to go in and watch that video because they know that they got to experience it live and they can also see their chats. Like, right. so if they're in the stream, they can like watch the chats on the side of the screen um as the video is happening and it just adds that extra layer of coolness and of course um if you're a person that enjoys watching my streams if you're on my youtube channel then it's like you get to experience that with me even though you weren't there to experience it live and i think that was a really clever workaround of mine because i hated i hated sitting there and recording all this stuff and like trying to look into the camera and speak and record dialogue because i just it just took me so long because I, I, I always wanted it to be so perfect and it's something that I couldn't get around. And then one day I just figured, oh, well, I mean, I could just record it on my live stream. And then ever since then, it's just that little anxiety that I've had of, oh, man, I got to go and record now. And now it's just not there and it, it makes it a lot easier. Right. That's so interesting. And it's just, dude, your, your content these days, it's like a, it's a flywheel. It's just like, it's just every social platform you've had dial, like, I don't, because uh, these days, like, when I'm thinking about my content strategy in Rocket League, I, because I've always been, like, the long-form tutorial, like, YouTube kind of, yeah. kind of guy, I just try, I try, I've been trying to emulate what you do as much as I can with, like, okay, let's make a long video, and let's find a way to get it out to TikTok, let's find a way to get it out to, to Insta, and, and even YouTube shorts, dude, I started doing YouTube shorts, and my channel's done so much better, just because mm -hmm. I saw you doing your YouTube shorts, I'm like, it, it, dude, YouTube shorts are great, and uh, have you gotten a YouTube shorts bonus yet? I have, they're not crazy, but it's nice. No. They're not crazy, no, but it's I nice. haven't gotten one more in like seven or eight hundred dollars. Like that's by far. I mean, and usually it's just a few hundred dollars at most. Um, if I posted them every single day with new videos, then it might do well. Like I know some people. Um, I don't know if you know them. They actually used to be Rocket League creators on TikTok, but there's this guy named Mapples. Don't and, recognize uh, the name, but but go so on. So he used. He, I think he got to like a few hundred thousand followers on TikTok, and then he just didn't post uh, Rocket League content anymore. And then he started posting like try not to laugh challenges and that type of content which all respect to him i i personally would not want to go that route honestly the content is super easy to make and i can see why he'd want to go in that direction i'm just not very passionate about that type of content yeah. but it's been very 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 successful for him like he gets millions of views every single time he uploads and he uploads like once or twice a day and he's probably making upwards of maybe two to three thousand off of the youtube shorts bonus if i had to guess maybe even yeah. possibly a little bit more but what I've noticed is that some of the, like, he even got to a million subs, like, super, super freaking quick. And there's another guy, his name is v Vayepi. He, he, his name used to be Vape on Rocket League TikTok. He used to post Rocket League content. And then he switched do, to I Minecraft content. Yeah, so he switched yeah. to Minecraft content and on YouTube and stuff. And same thing, he gets quite a bit of views on his YouTube shorts. But then if he posts a normal long video, he just does not get views. Same thing for Mapples. And mm. I've noticed that the people who grow really quickly off of YouTube shorts and only mainly post YouTube shorts don't really find very much success in, in actual videos. And like that's what I want to avoid. Right. That is absolutely what I want to avoid because while YouTube shorts is a, like, is a tool that you absolutely need to take advantage of, you don't want to, that to be everything. Like That's why I try and post a few, a few YouTube shorts a week but also I'm posting like short, fun little clips from my stream that are kind of funny, or maybe it's just a nice shot, whatever it may be. Um, I also post little mini montages, and then I post the long videos pretty consistently as well. And that's because 
I don't want people to think of me as the YouTube shorts guy. I want people to see me as like, oh, that's the streamer that posts on YouTube. Like those are clips from his stream right. um, and all that stuff. Also, I, th I mean, if you're pretty consistent with posting the normal videos, even a 30 second video on YouTube will earn a monetization. It will earn money. And you, the opportunity to make money goes up way, way more if you're even just posting those like minute long videos. You'll yeah. still make a good bit. Not nearly as much as like a consistent 15 minute long video. Like you'll make four, five, six dollars per thousand monetizable views on a 15 minute video, but you'll make like maybe one or two dollars off of yeah. a minute long video. But that's still, it's still nice though. You know, it's still better than nothing. Like if you get a million, I got 11 million views on one one of my YouTube shorts. It's my most viewed one. It's probably at 12 now, but I made like 50 cents off that video. <laughs> that's insane. Yeah. So like, you know, you can post a YouTube short and get 10 million views, or you can post a minute long video that gets 50,000 views and you'll make 50 to a hundred dollars off that short video as opposed to a dollar off the 10 million or the 10 million view video it's like yeah. you know just play your options <laughs> or you can diversify the content like i have and kind of kind of hit both of them you know right well i think and there's more value long term in yeah. like the longer form you can do that's what i've realized like and i've really tried to move connect there. to you like right as, as convenient as the youtube shorts are people aren't really going to connect to you as much and that's why i love what i'm doing on tiktok i'm posting my tiktok videos but when i go live that's long term you know that's the same yeah. thing as when i go live on twitch i'm people get to see me live and that is helping them develop a connection with me and they're able to actually see me and my personality not in a short firm video and with YouTube, you know, you got to be able to connect with your audience. That's the main way that you can grow an audience is connecting with them. And it's super hard to do if all you're doing is posting a short video every now and again, you know? Yeah. And I think especially in gaming, dude, it's even worse. Yeah. It, gaming can definitely be one of the hardest ways to grow as a creator, man. Yeah. That, well, that, there are ups and downs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's the hardest out there to grow. But if you're trying to grow as a streamer in, in, in gaming... It is absolutely one. I mean, what do they say? It's like only the top 1% of Twitch streamers actually make enough to do it full time or something like that. It, there's no that that is got to be an overestimation because hey, <laughs> no but, overestimation. No. Yeah, because because how many people do you know out there who are just at the bottom of like like regular streamers maybe. But how many people just want to be a Twitch streamer and or like go live like once do they count in that really? statistic i don't know i would i would say so i think that statistic probably i mean i do that that's off the top of my head i don't know yeah. if that's really true i know it's an insanely small percentage of all people yeah um who, who, who stream on twitch you can actually do it full time and make enough money to do it full time um but here's the other thing is like all, all those streamers who are able to do it full time also have other means of income. So they're making money off YouTube or they're making money off of uh, TikTok and like sponsorships and stuff. So while uh, there's a lot of people who make a ton of money off of Twitch and like the ads that you can get and the subscribers that they get off of Twitch, most of them also have a diverse income stream. And so it, it, it goes way into that, but it just takes work. It takes dedication for sure. I actually made a tweet about it like earlier, maybe a few days ago, just I saying how like, some people say that it's easy and actually one of my buddy my really good friend the one i've mentioned th several times like sometimes me and him will be playing on my stream and i'll be like oh dude i'm just tired he's like what do you like what reason do you have to be to be tired you play video games for a living and i'm like <laughs> yeah i'm gonna smack you right now i, wa I want to physically I'm cause you harm i'm, on, like, I'm dude, ongoing yeah, <laughs> it's, it's not easy first of all you got to get to the point where you can do it full time but even then it's not just getting online and streaming you're making content you're making yeah. sure that, like you know if you if i have a bad day if i go live I'm, i can't have a bad day my viewers can tell i've had streams where i'm just not in a good mood like you know my grandpa passed away and i would be streaming and stuff and they can tell and it, it, it makes people not like if the vibe is negative or if you're just kind of depressed honestly people don't really want to watch that they probably they want to go have a good time because a lot of these people who watch streamers it's their entertainment you know instead right. of watching tv they watch streamers instead of watching youtube they watch streamers and so that's their escape they don't want to hop into your stream and feel sad they want to hop yeah. into your stream and laugh and then and enjoy it so like it's acting more or less sometimes most of the time you're in a good mood but if you're not you better turn that frown Dude. upside down and, and get busy with it you know and uh, that's something that people just don't realize well i have it, 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 it can take a toll mentally i have massive respect for well do you and anybody who streams because i know like 
for me, just trying to get into it, I feel like a streaming hour, I've always said like a recording hour is like three times as exhausting as just like a normal like day to day hour. Like if I'm if I'm trying to record a YouTube video for an hour, the amount of energy it's a workout, man. Like because mm -hmm. you're like really focused, really trying to bring good script. I can't imagine for streaming. Oh my god, like four it, hours it, on stream. That's a, that's why I that's say cardio. like <laughs> I usually try and sp like my I don't want my streams to be any less than four hours as long as I don't have anything else to do. But like I said, after hour four, man, the brain it just stops working the same way. That's why I gotta like stop playing ranked after a certain time because it's it is hard especially with a mentally challenging game like rocket league to sit there and grind wow. for four or five six hours it is just it's so mentally tasking and um i think rocket league might be one of the hardest games to do that with because it's it takes so much of your attention like and that. so much you know minute details in your gameplay it can be very very difficult to like especially if you're trying to play at a high level you know yeah. well speaking of speaking of high level the only other thing i wanted to ask you about this is more like selfishly but um okay. you got signed with ghost dude how, how did that yeah. happen how did that happen that's awesome so, that's awesome um, first off. so i've been with him now for a long time I, a little over a year actually a pre well actually more a year and several months almost maybe a year and a half and um i knew that i wanted to join an org as a creator for a while I once I started getting a, a few hundred viewers consistently, um, I, I definitely knew that that's the direction that I wanted to go because I wanted to be a little bit more connected in the Rocket League scene with organizations. I wanted to have that extra connection and I wanted to be seen as a guy. who. Some people think that if you join an org, you're, you've made it right. Like if you join an org, you're up to that point. But that's really not the, t the case. Um, because, you know, you get different contracts. Like some people think that if you join an org, they're paying you crazy, crazy. And yeah. that is definitely not the case. It is absolutely a case by case uh, situation. There are some Rocket League creators out there that get paid quite a bit, but usually they're the but like the old heads, you know, like if they've been in the Rocket League scene for years and years and years, they're worth more because right. they're way more well known overall. Even if they're averaging less amount of viewers, it's just it's about that like stance, you know. But the way that ended up going with Ghost is that. Pretty much, I told my managers over and over and over that I was looking for representation by a, an org. I, I told them that whoever it is, as long as the deal is good, I, I want to be in it. You know, it, um, I want to be able to do stuff for them. And overall, it's just going to be a good thing. And so I, I was in talks with a few different orgs, um, not, mm. not the tier ones, like some smaller ones and some orgs that wanted to maybe dabble in rocket league again not like the not the really well-known ones but like kind of newer ones and it yeah. just ended up not really working out and uh wasn't what i wanted i didn't like the vibe of everything um but then they came up to me and said ghost and i i've known ghost for a long time even back before i started to do content creation i would wear the ghost um the all black old ghost uh decal for the octane oh yeah I, nice. I would be using that one so and i also loved them I, I liked watching them i cheered for them so i thought it was a perfect fit and um we ended up getting we talked for uh probably about a few months just making sure everything was good and then you know the contract and all that stuff monthly pay and the deliverables like what they were expecting out of me and uh got got all the minutia worked out and then uh ever since then we've been cruising like you know, I do some stuff for them here and there. Whenever they ask, I'm always messaging them being like, hey, what can I do for you guys? One thing I've been doing recently is uh, I'll host tournaments. So like they're sponsored by Challenger Mode, which is a website that you can do um, competitive games for, for prize money. Oh, yeah. And so I will host tournaments through Challenger Mode where I basically get my viewers to participate in this. All they have to do is sign up on the website and then the prize is like $200, $300. So it's a pretty good prize. I do the things like that. Sometimes I'll make some TikToks for them here and there. And uh, of course, I'm using a lot of their stuff. I use their merch. Like when I was in London and whenever I'm in Dallas, I'll wear my jersey and I'll support them in that way and take pictures with people with that. And there's a whole bunch. Like, you know, I've mm -hmm. I've met up with uh, like Lion Blaze and all them. Yeah. And it, it's, been, it's been free. Yeah, yeah. It's been it's been pretty dang awesome, man. It's been a good experience for me. I know some creators haven't had the best experience joining orgs. Um, mm. But so far, I mean, I've been I've been loving Ghost. And, uh, you know, like there's been a few times since I've been with them for a while where we have need to like, you know, like re-up the contract and renew some things, update some things. And it's been good. But um, personally, and again, it changes case by case. But for me, I, I'm pretty blessed to say that uh, I've actually really enjoyed my time with Ghost. And uh, it's been it's been awesome.
they they've treated me well. You know, I'm sure that I'll be with them. You know, whenever the contract's over in a year, I'm sure that uh, we'll uh, we'll renegotiate and probably stay with them. I mean, I've I've definitely loved it. But that's it. Are you looking to uh, join an org? Like, have you looked to I, me at all? I've been making some friends. I made some friends in London, which was cool. <laughs> uh, I, oh yeah. No, no, no spoilers, of course. But I, of course, of course, of course. To me, it's like I think. I think it would be so cool to be signed in or just as a personal, it's it's more of an achievement thing. It's like a, yeah, yeah. It's, a it's a personal thing, but, but my stance on that sort of thing has always been, it's really hard to, a lot of people like get to like, you know, 20 K 30 K 40 K and they want to go chase down or they're like, I need to get signed. I need to get signed. And to me, it's more like, why don't I just continue building a name for myself? Why don't I continue working on my own thing? And then the amount that I can offer to an org when I really, really want to pursue it, it'll be worth their time. You know, I, I think yeah. I'm starting to get to that point now on YouTube, but to me, it's always been, I would love I to one day, but let me build up my name so that way somebody, you know, it makes more sense. I definitely think it's something that should be brought to you instead of you bring to them. Like, you know, I, I basically told my managers like, hey, if you want to ask around, that's that's cool, but I want to be signed to an org, but I'm not desperate. So if they come yeah. to you, that, you know, we can get things going. But um, I, I definitely think you shouldn't be chasing. Like, they should... You should let everyone know that you're down to join an org. I think actually Thanovic, uh, I saw a tweet from him saying that he was open. He said, you know, message to all orgs, here's what I've accomplished, um, you know, whatever. And once you, you should definitely just focus on you and the org will come later if, if that's yeah. the direction that you want to go. You definitely, it, it, it's way better and it looks way better and it also ends up going a lot better if they come to you and if they express interest in you as opposed to you chasing down orgs and wanting them to, um, like, kind of, not begging, but, you know, asking them, like, hey, I want to be a part of your org. What will you offer me? Because at the end of the day, it's a symbiotic relationship. Like, yeah. they're giving, they're getting something out of you, and you're getting something out of them. Whether that be a monetary, like, salary out of them, or maybe you just want to be a part of their org because, you know, they have a big following and you just want to be associated with them, and they're going to be getting stuff out of you in the form of you're promoting the stuff that they're promoting, you're promoting their sponsors, you're promoting their org with, with merch, and uh, pretty much just whatever they ask of you. I mean, it's yeah. going to be different, but it is, it is an accomplishment. I mean, no matter what happens, if, if you get to join an org, that means that you have reached a certain level, which is, which is very, it, it's, yeah. it's a pretty nice achievement, but it's not, it's not one that you should rush, you know? Good, good. That makes me more content. Maybe, dude, I, when we get to Worlds, maybe we'll, uh, maybe I'll meet some people. Maybe my answer will change say, I'm, on I'm part sure two. That there's a, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that will meet in Worlds. I'm, I'm excited because that's the big one, you know? Like, I've yeah. been to LA, we went to London, but Worlds is where it's going to matter. And uh, who, who are you staying with, by the way? And uh, Like, not, maybe not who and where, but, like, are you staying with a group or? Yeah, Um. so I'll be traveling with some of the people in my coaching program. A lot, a lot of my coaches will All be right. there. A lot of my team members, my editor, will, editors will be there. Not editors. Now we have, do we pick, we have picked yeah. up two. There's so many. No, but I'll be, I'll be traveling with, with people on the team. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I, like I'm staying in a pretty big house that we all pitched in to get, a, I don't even know exactly how big it is, but like I was talking to this man named Sworn, amazing yes. guy, really. You, We're, right, both so from, Sworn, uh, We're both from Chicago. We're both from Chicago. Yeah. Sworn's a cool freaking guy. I met him in LA and, uh, you know, he decided to bring me in to be one of the people that stays in the house. And I was like, hey, I don't care where we stay as long as there's a hot tub and as long as there's a pool, I'll be happy. <laughs> and uh, we ended up getting a pretty big place. So I'll be staying there with a bunch of other people. And I'm definitely looking while I'm there, number of, of course, to meet the viewers who, you know, know me and, and like my content and stuff. I'll be meeting a lot of them. But I also really want to connect with just the people in the Rocket League scene. Like, yeah. dude, when I was uh, in London, freaking Dazarin came over to our Airbnb just like in the middle, it was like two or three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And uh, I was just, we were all just exhausted. Like, Try House was streaming on his mobile setup. There's just like 10 people in there. And then I just like walk into the living room. There's Dazarin with like a t shirt, with like a, like a tank top on, just eating French fries. And I, I, I had to do a double take. I'm like, hi, Daz. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, what's up, bro? I'm like, yeah, late night you're gonna have to wake up early for like uh the next day was sunday which is championship and i'm like you gonna be good for tomorrow he's like ah oh, yeah brian gotta be in there till like 11 or 12 i'm like shit all right <laughs> cool man hey good to see you and then he offered me some surprise i'm like man dazzle's a cool guy so it's just cool to be able to like yeah. you know connect with these different people in the rocket league scene and that's what i love most about going to these events so i'm, I'm super excited it's gonna be fun <laughs> well uh, yeah there are too many stories some some that i can share 
some that I'll save until the next time we have you on because I don't want to. Yeah. Some of them probably shouldn't be sh- shared on the <laughs> podcast. Yeah, some of them might not be a public. That, that's that's a that's a night out in uh in Dallas. That's that's where we share those. <laughs> that <laughs> exclusive content. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Yo, Tanasi, dude, it's 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 been amazing to have you on. Thanks for coming on again. Been a pleasure. I I don't know if I have anything else until until next time until worlds. And so, yeah, until Worlds, I'll probably do a vlog or something. <laughs> yes, sir. I'll catch you there, brother. Take care. All right, man. Have a good one. Peace out.